Hi there everyone, welcome back to the Royal Society where we have blockbuster YouTuber Derek Muller from Veritasium. I'm sure you've seen his videos before. Here's just a little taste of the kind of stuff he's making. But today, he's here at the Royal Society with the card catalogue to do the white gloves of destiny. Are you ready, Derek? I'm ready to let these white gloves guide me. All right, so yes. I want you to close your eyes. Okay. You choose a draw, you go ahead. All right. Tell me what you're thinking. What's your, like, what's the... I mean, I, I want to pick something that feels random. Okay. So I'm going to go, like, here. Oh, we've gone low. Okay. Yep. yep. All right, so we've got a deep, nice deep draw here. Yep. Okay. All right. Okay, it's in here somewhere. Okay. Well, Again, I'm just going to go, I'm going to go right here. Here, okay. What have we got? Henry Jeffries. We, we don't know a place or a date. But it's to John Herschel. Pratt has given his permission for the rules and they can be enrolled as soon as the tables have been added. We'll arrange a meeting with Harrison. Leaves home tomorrow. Keith Moore, head librarian here at the Royal Society, will come and take the details down on a call slip. Got a first impression there, Keith? Ah, uh, no place, no date. That's uh, not a good start. We have another tradition here. You can have a provisional. You can have like a second card. Like in case when you hit a golf ball and you think, oh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to find that. Yep. So you hit a second golf ball. Sure. We're going to have a second card that you can pull. All right. Let's do the same. All right. Eyes uh, are closed again. Let's go for something where like nobody would normally look. Top left. Top left. Top left. Okay. And how deep are we going to uh, go? We're going to go there. Okay. Here we go. 1892. Frederick... Abel, report on a paper by H.B. Dixon on the rate of explosion in gases. I like that. I know it's a referee's report. Keith, I've been learning my lessons because it says RR there. So this is going to be a referee's report about someone else's paper. Well, there could be some dirt there. That could be fun. It's yeah. snarky. Right. Yeah. So we will now go downstairs and have a look at what you pulled. Let's do it. Let's do it. So first of all, we have a referee's report. Uh -huh. It's 11.140. There we are. Now the Herschel letters are down here. So we have Herschel 10 and it's number 307, which should be in this box. We're good. Okay. All right, so this was the first one, Derek. This is the Jeffrey letter to Herschel. So that's the top file, there. Eh? Okay. Oh, well. Right, let's just we can, see. We can de-glove now as well. Yeah, people, really? People will get really upset, but you're supposed to handle paper without gloves. Right, yeah. okay. Yeah. So here we are. This is it. And this is by Mr. Jeffries to Sir John Herschel. Can we read his handwriting? We can, yes. Would uh, you like to try? Well, that's the challenge. Yeah. My dear sir, I go... I go to I London go, tomorrow. I go to London tomorrow, yes. For a day or two. For a day or two, yes. It's been a while. I hope not to return before Friday. Very good. Meanwhile, I write to say that Tid, Tid Pratt, Pratt has given his imprimatur to our rules and I will have them enrolled as soon as we have added the tables. Hmm. I shall see Mr Hamish tomorrow and we shall arrange someday soon for our meeting. I feel like this is kind of like reading someone's email. <coughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like in the old days. I'll be there in a bit. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see you tomorrow. Yep. Yeah. I conclude you have not yet received any answer from Mr. Wylan. I shall leave. I shall leave some tomorrow directly after breakfast, as I have several of my neighbours I wish to see. But my servant will follow me by the coach when it comes mm. in about a quarter before eleven. He could thereupon give me any letter, supposing you have anything to communicate after post time tomorrow. We don't even know if this is about yeah. science or administration of the Royal Society. Or... It's a tables there, so presumably it's some kind of mathematical or astronomical table. Okay. But it would take a bit of detective work to find out what he's, uh, what he's talking about. What are your feelings, Derek? Well, yeah, I, like I say, just it feels like very, very ordinary communication. There's this line here, do you think we shall have something in... Be prepared in respect of tables by tomorrow. What, what are these that? tables? What yeah. are the tables? This is the it, mystery. It is, it is a deep mystery. So if we wanted to solve the mystery, yeah. we'd have to find all the preceding letters and following letters. Yep, and yep, yep. And they'll probably be there because we've got over 10,000 of 10, letters. Well, we've only got Derek for another 30 minutes. So. Okay, well, uh, get reading, Brady. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Still, Derek, 
John yes. Herschel, kind of a big deal. Legend. Held that letter and read it just like you just did. That's got to mean something. That is very cool. I mean, it's uh, it's amazing that these things are here, right? And so, you know, keeping this history is incredible. And I know for some of the videos that I've been working on, often we are chasing letters and correspondence to really get to the bottom of the meaning of something. Mm. So I can imagine that you know, if someone wanted to tell the story of those tables, that letter would be pretty important. But you are not that person. I'm not that person. I'm not, I'm not in search of the understanding of the, the tables. Let's see how your second poll went. Did you do any better with that one? I hope so. Uh, so we have a referee's report. Now, Frederick Abel is a big figure. He, you know, he, he was an explosives expert, worked at Woolwich. We should get something interesting here. Oh. Have a look at this. Notice the paper it's on. Imperial Institute. No, no, the border. What about the border? What do you think? I have no idea. It's just a border. <laughs> just a border. <laughs> Can I drop my knowledge bomb? Do, do drop your knowledge bomb, Brady. This means the person writing it is in mourning for someone who's died. Huh. I had no idea. Mm, so when you see these black borders and all these books, you know someone has died recently. Knowledge how, bomb. How, knowledge bomb dropped. How long would they do that for? So someone's died. Is this a month? Is it two weeks? Is it a year that they're in mourning? And they, so if you're in mourning and you send a letter, you put the black paper behind it. You've, uh, you've exhausted my knowledge, Bob. Okay. <laughs> Keith? Yeah, uh, so uh, you would be in mourning for quite a long time. If you were a, a man, you might wear crepe around, black crepe around your hat. If you were a woman, you'd be in mourning, a black dress. Hmm. Uh, there are even memorial jewellery produced at this time. So my ring here, the black ring, that's in memoriam for a, a 19th century vicar. Hmm. So it's a second hand ring, but people oh, wow. would wear this kind of jewellery. What does it say that the ring on your wedding finger is like a mourning ring? Uh, yeah, I'll, let's, <laughs> let's not go into it. Okay, let's, <laughs> let's move on. Let's move on to the contents of the letter. This is the actual letter. Yeah, yeah. 1892. Uh, so you can see Frederick Abel's signature there and we can read the letter. All right. I mean, you might be able to. I, I struggle with these people. Dear so, Lord Rowley, yeah. is this the right one? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So he's writing to Lord Rowley, who uh, has asked him to do a referee's report on this particular paper okay. that's been sent in. I have carefully uh, gone through Professor Harold Dixon's paper on the rate of explosion in gases and am of the opinion that it is in every respect suitable for publication in extenso in the Philosophical Transactions. Oh, so, look. publish the thing complete. Ten, ten, out, ten out of ten. <laughs> yeah. You never see that. Yep. That's a great referee's report. I wish when I published my papers I got reports back like that. Yep. No so, changes. No, nothing at all. I like a little bonus Lord Rally there as well. That's a nice yeah, little Yeah, it's like. a good one. They are for two referees quite often. So the next letter here, also to, to Lord Rayleigh, is on the same paper. This is by G.D. Living. I have no difficulty about recommending Dixon's paper on the rate of explosions and gases for the philosophical transactions as a valuable and important contribution to our knowledge of the subject, although he has not been able to establish a thoroughly satisfactory theory of it. Oof. Mm. I feel like referees have to put something in there to show that they've read yeah. the paper, you know? Even if it's a good paper, they have to say something. Uh, that, that feels like a like a limited limited critique. I feel like I know what Derek's going to want next. I feel... Uh, well, I yeah. would like to see the paper. Yeah. Yes. I would like to see the paper well, that they if, published. Keith, if only you were prepared enough to have brought the paper with us. By a strange and remarkable coincidence, I have the explosive paper right here. All right. So the paper itself that has been so positively endorsed by these two referees is going to be here in this volume of it the is. Philosophical Transactions. I'm really, really hoping for like a picture or a diagram. Something exploding. Just something visual. I mean, like a paper about explosions, about expanding gases from 1892. Like that, I feel like that's a pretty good... That's a pretty good poll. But if we, if we get a picture of it, yeah. all the better. Well, this was a Royal Society named lecture. It became the Bakerian lecture for that year. So, oh, wow. so oh. it, this is it's a prize winning lecture. Top of the range. Look at this. He starts with the introduction. The experiments described in this memoir were undertaken with two objects. In the first place, to obtain information concerning the course of chemical change pursued by reacting gases. And secondly, to examine the nature of the explosion wave hmm. in gaseous mixtures discovered by Monsieur Berthelot. Hmm. We have an equation, which oh, yeah. I do like. The formula of Clausius, a theta equals 29.354 times the square root of T over D, where T is the absolute temperature reached in the explosion, and D, the density of the products of combustion referred to air. Lovely. I like that. I do like oh. an equation. 
Oh, oh we, we have we have some tables. Velocity in meters per second of the expanding gases. Oh, look, he's got calculations for it, and he's got the values that he found. And generally, they seem to be within uh, some some agreement. I'd say plus minus ten percent would be uh, hydrogen. He's done very well on that one. Carbonic oxide, not so well. Combustible gases with nitrous oxide. Yeah. Okay, so we've got all the tables of all these results. Wow. This is lengthy. It is. Yeah. He's given the whole opus here, which I think, you know. Yeah, he hasn't turned it into a YouTube video, has he? No, well, he's not done a short. He's, no. done, he's done a long form. He's going for the two or three hour. Yeah. I, I can't believe people would sit and listen to all of this, honestly. I start to wonder about those referees if they saw this, like, tome arrive and they just scribbled off those little notes. Yes, t absolutely worthy of publication. So they didn't want to read all of this. My goodness. Still going. This is really long. But, Still going. But I will say, Derek, you have done well on your first attempt at pulling with the gloves. Right. You were, your first one was a bit of a dud, but you came through with the back. I mean, this one, it just seems like he's done everything. Like, he's mm. gone through every possible mixture he could. I wonder if this guy just really loved explosions, because, uh, wow. Brady wants pictures of blowing stuff up. I know, and I understand. So oh, does oh, the internet. Oh, picture, picture. You do have an apparatus for preparing chlorine and hydrogen. Everyone's curious about how you might prepare it. Looks uh, very much as you'd expect. Old apparatus to look. I'm not still, oh look, oh hang on. He's got a cart, section of drum mounted on turntable and trolley for winding the explosion tube. Oh, okay. We've got all sorts of figures and diagrams now. But this, this just gets better and better. Look at all these apparatus he was using. Oh, that's amazing. And he's got firing wires, the firing piece. That's the explosion tube wound on the drum. Look at all this. This is great. Wow, this guy has been thorough. Yeah, this is really good. I'm not surprised the referees gave this the thumbs up. Right? Yeah. So we've got some posh graphs now. The end. Wow. I did not expect to get uh, something that that complex. We have gone, we've gone deep. And I think there could be a Veritasium video in this. Oh, absolutely. You could recreate one of these experiments, get the apparatus built, get it working. And I think people would like it to see all these exploding gases. Yeah. yeah. And compare the results you can get with modern instruments with what he was getting. Yeah. So this is like 19th century YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this could be. Oh, get on it. Get on it. All right. I look forward to that video in the next six months or so. Stay tuned. We'll pop a link to the Veritasium YouTube channel down below. Also, you can head over to our Patreon page to see more pictures and scans, high-res images of all the documents from today's video. That's one of the perks of being a Patreon supporter. You can see the names of some supporters here on the screen at the moment. If you'd like to become one, help us make more videos, please go across to the website and have a look. There'll be links down below to that as well. At the beginning, I think. Beginning? Yeah, maybe mm, this one. All right, let's have a look. We have an undated paper from 1868 by James Clark Maxwell. Oh, hey, Brady's terrible. Okay. On account of my ignorance of um, crystallography, 